So the other day I was going to do a video about the Danish girl. And I was already kind of late to the party in that regard because the Danish girl's sort of, you know, been out in cinemas and done its thing, gone around the world and that kind of stuff. Um, but I only got to see it about two weeks ago. But obviously at the time there was, you know, an earthquake and started thinking about the earthquake and started thinking about other things. So now that things have calmed down, let's talk about the Danish girl. So what did I think of the movie? Well, might as well let me explain. Yeah, so just watch the Danish girl. Wasn't keen on it. Yeah, so I wasn't exactly thrilled with the movie. The representation was kind of weird, and I wasn't quite so keen on Eddie Redmayne in the main role. Not to say that he's not a bad actor, but he can't bring that kind of experience that a trans woman can. He becomes another one of those actors playing trans woman, which you see so much in the media, and that kind of just really kind of annoyed me. There was a lot of parts in the film that really just... <clears throat> when watching it. For example, we'll start from the beginning of the film. There's a moment where Ina, that's Lily's male name, um, was painting a picture of trees. But yeah, he was saying that uh, he was painting the bog. And then his wife, Gerda, comes up and says, Oh, you be careful, because otherwise that bog's gonna, you know, eat you up or something, something like that. I can't remember. And then he's like, No, Gerda. He's got a really deep voice as well, by the way. I don't know why he did that. No, Gerda. The bog is already inside me. Okay, we're watching a movie about trans people. So obviously that kind of uh, phrase is going to be a metaphor for being trans. It's kind of obvious because it's like, you know, oh, this, the feelings inside me. But the bog? The bog? Who wrote this thing? And then that, that just kind of goes on even more when you see, you know, later on Lily gets a nosebleed. And then she goes to the doctor and they're like, oh, you've got stomach cramps and your nose is bleeding on a monthly basis. What could this mean? It's a metaphor for getting her period. She's getting her period out of her nose. Because that's what happens to trans people, you know? I mean, I get my period out of my nose all the time. I thought this was like 2016! A time for accuracy, please! The film was directed by Tom Hooper and the novel that it was based on was written by David Urbishoff. And the film was based on the book, which was based on a true story. So there's been like two levels of like fabrification, fabrication. There's been two levels of fabrication and it's kind of getting as far away from the truth as possible. But going back to the film, the film did have its good points. It was very pretty. It looked really nice. I did quite like that. I mean, it was always quite aesthetically like, ah, oh, just to see, ah, oh, it's so, so pretty, it's nice. But, um, and there were moments in the film where it did kind of connect with me. But then the film would do something stupid by saying, you know, um, Lily talking about Aina being dead. There was a moment where she was saying to somebody, I can't remember even who was in the film, obviously I wasn't paying much attention because by that point I was like, alright. But she said to somebody, you know, Einar is dead, he's not coming back, he's gone, I am here, Lily Victorious. Don't know why I can find those two things together, but you know, it works. So yeah, there was quite a lot of um, symbolism and metaphors around Lily being two different people, which is not the case with trans people. But there were points in the films that it was very much conveyed that way. Like after Lily goes out for the first time um, to a ball and next morning Aina's there and he's painting away and, and his wife Gerda comes in and, and he says, Hmm, did, did Lily have fun last night? I wouldn't know. Did, did, did she have a good time? And and then, because she didn't have a good time last night. Spoiler alert. And it's just like, why are you asking that? You were there. You are a little bit. Mm. That's the only time that it happened. And then after that, it was kind of toned down a little bit. But they still keep mentioning Aina and Lily as two people. And it's just like when they kept calling the trans woman in Dallas Buyers type he all the time. It's like, no, 
she's a she. Even though she's played by Jared Leto, she was a she. I don't even know what representation of that was in that movie. Her character is all over the place. Man, I must sound so better when it comes to like trans people in films. There are some really good ones though, like Boy Meets Girl, starring actual trans girl Michelle Henley, which, you know, she's on YouTube by the way, so you should go click on her face and subscribe to her because she's hella awesome. And then there's Jen Richards, who's the co-creator, writer and producer of Her Story, which is a six-part TV series which you should also check out because it stars written by as produced, trans women, trans people all over that show. Links there as well, next to a picture of Jen Richard's face. Cause you know, let's chuck people's faces in here. They're famous, why not? So yeah, there's a lot of good trans representation out there, but I'm not 100% sure that the Danish girl is one of those. Can sort of, you know, bring up the idea that there are trans people out there and there's trans issues, but um, could have been done so much better. So let me know what you think. Have you seen the Danish Girl? If you haven't, let me know in the comments. If you have, let me know in the comments. You know, it's good to build discussion about this and talk about it. Or like make a video response. Why not? What are some other representations of trans people in the media that you like? Let me know. Until then, I will see you guys later. Make sure to like and subscribe and do all that jazz, you know. It's just a little flick of the button and you can see more of this little mug. Thanks for listening to me complain.